My favorite holiday launch is here, you guys. My Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked Palettes just rolled up in the mail when I got back from my nail appointment, so I'm excited to demo all of these for you today, show them on my face, watch them, compare them to one another so that you can best decide which palette is going to work for you because these guys are 85 buckaroos each. These are one of the more expensive holiday items that come out every year, but in my opinion, these are the ones that I tend to use the most. I find them to be a great value because Hourglass, she a pretty penny. Um, so I always think that these are a great value. I always end up using these the most out of the holiday launches, so I always end up recommending these. But I want to show you, since we have three palettes this year, each of them so that you don't have to buy all three unless you want to. So right now these guys are available on the Hourglass website. I will have them linked down below if you are interested in picking them up. They're going to be $85 each. And as stated before, there are three different palettes each that Hourglass intended, one for a light skin tone, one for medium skin tones, and one for deeper complexions. And we're gonna test that out today to see if that's really true. Now what's really cool if you didn't know about these palettes, you'll see that they all have different artwork. Hourglass collaborated with the artist Katie Scott on these palettes. If you didn't know, 5% of the profits from these palettes will support the non-human rights projects in their efforts to secure fundamental rights for animals. So that's also really cool, but that is why there are animals. And what I also think is so nice is no matter which color palette you decide that you want to pick up, you can customize which packaging you want. So when you go on the website, if you want the tiger palette, but you don't want the actual tiger packaging, you can pick this color story and then change up the packaging to the butterflies or the elephants. Such a fun feature. These palettes are gonna be exclusives for the 2022 season, meaning they are limited edition until they sell out. Typically, for those of you that like to wait for sales, I've noticed the last two years, one of the palettes went on sale. So whatever the not best sellers were, if they had leftovers, they would go on sale. But prior to the past two years, these guys never went on sale. So if you decide to wait, it might take a little bit of luck to get them on sale, but I have seen them on sale before. Because $85 a pop, is not good. If I had to predict, I would say the Butterfly, which is the lightest palette, would probably be the one that goes on sale, but that's just my educated guess. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get into these palettes. All of the palettes are going to come in their themed packaging. This is what the box looks like. You have the info right here, and then you have on the back right here. You'll see we have a 12-month shelf life made in Italy, and then it has the color explanations over here. I'm gonna first go into the Tiger palette because this is the one that is intended for deep skin tones, so we are really gonna see if it actually fits the bill. Here is what the packaging looks like. Honestly, it feels so high quality. You're not gonna be able to scratch off the prints. Ooh, it's nice. It's in tin packaging. And here's the back with all of the shade descriptions. Are we ready to rumble? Here we go. Has a nice mirror. It doesn't hold up on its own. And here's the palette. It runs generally warm. Lights are down. Here's a better look at the colors. There are four new colors in this palette and then two existing. So the existing ones are going to be iridescent rose and then transcendent light. And then the new shades are this one, this one, this one, and this one. So let's first swatch the new shade. Oh, just kidding. We're first gonna swatch the existing shades. Transcendent Light, which is supposed to be a finishing powder. We're definitely gonna try that as a bronzer on me. Gonna be great for deeper complexions. And Iridescent Rose, which is a blush. Lots of pigment there. Brilliant Glow Strobe Light. This new blush, Burnish Glow. Then we have Copper Flash Strobe Light. And then we have Divine Strobe Light. So here they are. This one is a strobe powder, meaning it has extra glow to it. I'm gonna try that as a bronzer topper on me. Then we have Burnish Glow, which is a blush. I'm so excited about this blush shade. Copper Flash Strobe Light Strobe Powder. So it's supposed to be a highlight, gonna be great on deep complexions or as a blush topper. And then Divine Strobe Light Strobe Powder, which I'm gonna try that as a highlight on me, but this is definitely looking to be a great palette for deep complexions. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a Sigma blush brush, and we're gonna start off with Transcendent Light 
highlight right here, which is a finishing powder, which on me, I'm gonna attempt this as a bronzer. By the way, my makeup is simply not done because I'm gonna take this all off for the next palette. And I wanted to give each palette a full chance and give it that full demonstration on my face. So obviously, if you have a deeper complexion, obviously I can't be the one to show you the palette on a deeper complexion. I am trying it just so hopefully you can see how the colors work. Or if you are a collector and you want to see how this will work on lighter skin tones, hopefully this is helpful. I really just wanted to confirm that this palette wasn't going to work for me because when Hourglass sometimes, you know, launches, a palette that they say is for a deeper complexion, it, it works on me, which is a problem, and I don't think this one's gonna work for me, which is good. I'm gonna give this to my mom, who has a medium complexion and can make this work better. As a bronzer, it's not the right tone. It's definitely a little bit warm on my skin tone, but we made it work, and it blended beautifully as expected. Okay, let's try right here Burnish Glow as a blush. Now, low-key, I wanted to get this palette for this blush, because I'm using a very light hand, it is quite pigmented, but I can get this to work as a really pretty blush. If I wanted to build it up, I could. I don't really want to, and it leaves such a pretty warm look to the cheek, and then obviously you can build it up to get a lot of color. That's so pretty. We're gonna use Iridescent Rose next. So the blushes, I'm definitely able to make work for me. I don't think I will be able to get the strobe powders to work for me because those are supposed to be highlights <laughs> and they just won't be highlights. But this is the Iridescent Rose. This one is a lot softer, I feel like, than the Burnish Glow. I mean, I can get this palette to work for me. I just need to use it in a different way. And then we're gonna go ahead and try this. This is going to be a stunning highlight on a very deep complexion, the Copper Light, a little bit. And I'm gonna try this as a blush topper or a blush itself, really, because this has a lot of pigment. This is not gonna work as a strobe highlight on me. Not the most flattering on my cheek, as you can see, but if you like that glowy look on the cheek and you have a lighter complexion, you can make this work. And if I blend it out, it really isn't not that bad. I'd probably keep it a little bit higher on my cheek, not quite so much on the apple, and use a little bit of a lighter hand. But it works as a blush topper, but it's a bit metallic. Okay, let's try the Brilliant Light Strobe Light Strobe Powder as a blush topper on this side of my face. Ooh, that actually complements the Iridescent Rose Blush. See, this is a little bit more flattering on me. It has less of a pigment. It's this shade right here, by the way. It gives like a gold topper to the cheek, which is very pretty. So this is a pretty kind of golden cheek topper. And then lastly, for the sake of it, let's try Divine Strobe Light Strobe Powder as a highlight. It's definitely not my cup of tea. There's a slight cast, but it is workable as a highlight, but there are other highlights that I would use over this. This is a great highlight for medium complexions and then up. So overall, can I get this palette to work for me? Absolutely. But honestly, I'd be more interested just to purchase this Burnish Glow Blush on its own because the palette itself, while I can get it to work for me, you can tell not made for my skin tone. I really do think that this is going to work great for deeper complexions. So I think they did a really, really good job with this. I'm really excited about it. Hourglass powders are so soft and so workable, which is why I was able to make these colors work for me. But if you do have a deeper complexion, I really do think they were successful with this. It's gonna work great. It's the beautiful hourglass formula. So I am very, very happy with this one. If you have a lighter complexion like me, I don't recommend you buy this. This is $85. If I didn't do this as a job, would not have bought this for myself and still don't recommend it even after trying. But yay, my medium deeper complexions. This one is really nice. I do think that this will also work for a medium complexion as well if you're teeter tottering. This guy right here, I think is gonna save the day for the deep complexions for sure. Okay, so 
very, very happy with this. I'm gonna clean off my face and then we're gonna go into the Elephant palette, which is intended for medium skin tones. All right, let's hop on over to my favorite one, I think. I think it's gonna be my favorite one. This is the Elephant palette. This is the one that is supposed to be the Elephant packaging. And I would say, in general, the Elephant packaging is my favorite. So if I were to get a different color, I'd probably get it with this packaging. But here's the box. And then, oh, so pretty. It's this peachy pink color. And then here is the back of the palette. Let's take a look-see. This color story is right up my alley. This one's definitely my favorite. It has the pink blushes. This looks like it's gonna do very, very well for my skin tones. So there are two existing shades. They're gonna be these two right here. So this is Dim Light Finishing Powder. I have so many of these from palettes. It's a really great powder. We have Soft Light, which is also a finishing powder. It can be really great as a very natural highlight. And then these four right here are the new shades and they look beautiful. So this is supposed to be a strobe powder. This right here is a bronzer and then two blushes. I think this is overall one of the most well-rounded palettes as well in that you get two finishing powders, a bronzer, two blushes, and then a highlight. So let's go ahead and swatch these. I'm going to start off with these two, which are the pre-existing shades. These are going to be harder to see because they're finishing powders that actually are meant for my skin tone. So I have to show you them on. But that's dim light and this is soft light. And these are the finishing powders. You can really only tell on the face. And we're going to hop into this strobe powder and then the bronzer then the blush. Now that this palette is not as pigmented because it's not meant for a deeper complexion, they're gonna not be as nice swatches. But this is the Beaming Strobe Light Strobe Powder, which is a highlight. The Lustrous Bronze Light Bronzer. And then we have the Iridescent Coral Blush. And then I'm just gonna pop my finger into Radiant Rose blush right here so oh my gosh I already can tell this one's my favorite I haven't even opened the butterfly yet though but as of now this one is definitely more for me and if you want to see here's the difference this is the tiger palette and this is the elephant palette so very different levels of pigmentation here gonna start off with a Sigma blush brush and we're gonna get into the bronzer here and let's see how this bronzer looks on me See, this one is definitely a more appropriate bronze color for me. It's a warmer undertone, but it definitely is a better undertone than the one in the Tiger palette, which was a finishing powder anyways, but... Oh, yeah, this is the Hourglass blend that I love. Oh, it's so pretty. I don't even want to take this off for the next demo. I'm going to take a little bit of Soft Light right here. This is a Sydney Grace brush. And I'm gonna put it everywhere on my face. So this can set makeup, as you can see, while leaving a pretty glow on the skin. I do recommend, though, not necessarily setting with this, but to set with your normal powder. And then once you finish all of your makeup, to go over top with this. And this will blend everything seamlessly together, like your blush and your bronzer. And it will leave that glow behind. The reason I'm showing you this now is I wanted to show you how it looked like if you do choose to set with it. But you can also use this with a more dense brush as a very, very subtle golden glow in the high points of your face. I mean, if you don't like the look of highlight, maybe you have mature skin, this gives that little extra oomph. And then I'm going to do a little bit of dim light right here, which is a tad lighter. And this one, I'm gonna do the same with, just kind of put it all over. It's also gonna do a good job of blending the bronzer if you wanna put that on top. So the finishing powders typically tend to be a mystery to people if you don't know how to use them and you're new to the product. Pretty much they just leave a very soft sheen that honestly is only able to be seen in the sun, not even in the demo that I'm giving you today. It, it's more for a real life powder when you're outside. They are great to utilize to blend everything together before you step out. They're great to give a little extra highlighted look but not glowy or anything like that. Very pretty powders. Both of these have been in the line for a while. I'm very experienced with them. They're great. Great additions to these palettes. Okay, let's mess around with the blushes. So I'm gonna show you Iridescent Coral 
right here. And I loaded this one up since it had less pigmentation than the blushes in the Tiger palette. And this one has a golden sheen to it. I don't know if you can see. It applied with so much ease and it looks gorgeous. And then let's go ahead. I just wiped my brush off with Radiant Rose, which I think is going to be a little bit more flat. Now, Hourglass doesn't do flat matte powders, but it has less of a glow than the Iridescent Coral. And they both look pretty different, which is important to me considering they're both in the same palette. You want them to look different to stand out on their own. Radiant Rose, Iridescent Coral, they look different enough. They both have different finishes. If you like pinky blushes, stunning. And then finally, let's see how this Beaming Strobe Light Powder looks because it looks as though it could potentially be a bit dark on me. Let's see. Ugh, so nice. It's so good. I mean, I would say I typically prefer a little bit of a brighter highlight kind of shade, but wow. <laughs> I mean, this one I think is going to end up being my favorite. If you have like a light medium to medium complexion, this is definitely going to be the perfect palette for you, especially if you like the pinky blushes. You notice everything just looks so much more seamless. I'm even going to go ahead and show you. Let's take a little bit of soft light and then you can use this to kind of blend in and finish off the makeup to make everything look even more natural and soft. Again, hard to see on camera, but shows in real life. That's the magic of Hourglass. I don't even want to move on to the next palette because I want this to be my makeup for today. So this once again, the Elephant palette. Very, very different than the Tiger palette. Really enjoying this one. I'm going to take my makeup off and we're going to finish off with the last palette. This is the oops, Butterfly palette, which is supposed to be for the light skin tones. So let's see. But this is what the packaging looks like. To me, I, I don't care for the gold background. I like the pink and blue from the other two. I don't know. I, I just like the elephant and the tiger packaging better personally, but that's what the palette looks like. Boom, and here's the inside. This palette is intended for light skin tones, but what confuses me is I feel like the blushes are so dark for what is considered to be for light skin tones. Here it is right next to the medium palette and you can see just how deep the blushes are but the powders are lighter. So taking a look, I also don't like this palette as much because there's three new powders and then three existing powders, which is fine if you don't own a lot of hourglass and you don't have these shades, but given that it's a limited edition palette, I just would like all limited edition colors and the less, the better. And so the fact that this has more pre-existing shades, it kind of loses the value and what makes this special as a holiday palette. So the existing shades are these three right here, the lighter ones. So this is Ethereal Light, Finishing powder, incandescent light strobe powder, and then diffuse light finishing powder. So I'm going to swatch these first for you since these are the existing ones. As you can see, they're not going to look exciting. <laughs> but here's the ethereal light finishing powder, the incandescent light strobe powder, which is very, very bright, and then the diffuse light finishing powder. And then these three are the new ones. So we have soft flush blush. We'll do the blushes next to each other, sunset glow blush. And then here is celestial strobe light, which is a strobe powder, which looks much more impactful than the other strobe powder in here. So soft flush. Sunset Glow. I mean, these have pigment. They do. And then Celestial Strobe Light. So I don't know. I feel like the red blushes are kind of random in here. And you can see just how bright they are. This is the Elephant palette right here. It's not as well rendered as the palette as well because it doesn't have a bronzer. Okay, anyways, why am I complaining so much about this palette? It honestly is just the palette that makes the least sense to me. It's less valuable because there's less new shades anyways. So I'm going to start off with the Fuse Light Finishing Powder with the Sydney Grace brush. And I'm just going to quickly put it all over my face. I might go in later towards the end and use this to blend everything in. But I have a matte powder on since I did my makeup. 
So I just want to use this to kind of brighten up the face again. It has a little bit of a yellowy undertone to it. And then we also have the Ethereal Light Finishing Powder. This one is brighter than the other two finishing powders in the Medium palette. So this one is the best example of how I sometimes use it as a really natural glow on the high points of the face. Very pretty. This is actually, for me, the best to use as highlighty. but if you are more fair than me, this is gonna be the best finishing powder for you. So it makes sense that they put this one in this palette. And then let's see how incandescent light strobe powder looks. This one, again, is the existing one. So we have all of the existing shades on here. And I'm just gonna leave it on this cheek, but you can see this is a really pretty highlight, gonna be great on those of you with a fair complexion. It's not as metallic as a lot of the other highlights that are in these palettes. So we're gonna start off with Soft Flush Blush right here and I'm gonna pop this here which you can see it's very pigmented blends out easily because it's hourglass but it's just random to me that this is for light skin tones you can definitely make it work don't get me wrong if you have a light skin tone don't run away from this hourglass blushes in particular are so versatile for a variety of skin tones because of how easily they blend out but I think something softer would have been more appropriate for this palette and then we're gonna go did I use soft flush? I think I did. Okay, let's use this one right here. Sunset Glow. This is one of the new blushes. It has a nice gleam to it. They look different. This one, soft flush, has more pinkiness to it, I guess. I don't know, I feel like both of these also just look really close. Even in the swatches, right? Obviously, Soft Flush is a touch more pink. But on the cheeks, blended out, you can see the subtle pink difference in Soft Flush over here. But it's not different enough in an $85 palette, in my opinion. And then we're going to go ahead and get into the Celestial Strobe Highlight, which is very different from Incandescent Gold because it has more of a metallic finish. You can kind of see Incandescent Light is a little bit more natural and soft. Uh, celestial Strobe Light. It has actual like metallicness to it. I'm gonna blend in. Oh, interesting. I mean, the palette is not bad at all. The quality is really nice. It's just of the three palettes, this one makes the least sense to me in that this is curated for a light skin tone and the blushes are just very, very dark. I feel like it's a less cohesive palette. It doesn't contain a bronzer, so it's not as useful as a full face palette. To me, it's the palette that makes the least sense to purchase. I mean, the vibes are totally different between the Elephant palette and the Butterfly palette right here. I'm just not feeling this one. You know, there's three palettes, they're $85. This is the one that can get kicked off <laughs> for me. So let me go ahead and finish my makeup. I'm gonna put on a little bit of the bronzer from the Elephant palette on as well. Just to finish off the face and I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. For those of you who were in between palettes, I wanted to do comparisons where you can really look at them compared to each other. So here on my arm, from right here to right here is the lightest palette, the butterfly palette. From here to here is the medium palette, the elephant palette. And then from here to here, oh, from here to here is the tiger palette, which is the deeper one, so that you can really see that they are all very different, which I think makes it easier for you all to make a decision on what you think would be the best for you. In my opinion, you guys know I'm totally feeling the elephant palette. It is by far my favorite, one of the best ones that they've done. But I'm very happy overall with how different each of these look, how these all have different things to offer. And next to each other, if you wanna see palette by palette, this is the light palette right here, and this is the medium palette, totally different tones here. I don't know if anybody's actually between the butterfly and the elephant palette, but here are these two next to each other if you needed to take a look. And then the medium palette next to the tiger palette. Honestly. I quite like the Tiger palette. I know it's not really the best for my skin tone and it takes finessing to work, but the tones of these are so beautiful and I'm so in love with this blush right here. Let's say I were not a makeup reviewer. The Elephant palette, I think from this launch would be the only one that I would need. It has new shades, bronzers, blush, highlights, and finishing powders. It's really a complete curation here for everything that you need for a whole look. I think the tones flatter my skin tone the best 
process. And I think overall, this palette is the one that's going to work with the widest range of skin tones. I'm not really personally feeling the butterfly palette, but that's just me. That's all in my preferences. It has the least new shades in this palette and it lacks a bronzer. So that for me leaves me to not be as attracted to this palette. But if you like the blushes, you like what it has to offer. It is not bad in quality at all. It still is the great hourglass quality, just not feeling this one. And I really am feeling the Tiger palette. I think it's awesome, but for $85, it wouldn't make sense for me to purchase it. But if you have a medium to deep skin tone, this one is definitely a must have. So this is by far the best holiday launch that Hourglass has come out with when it comes to these palettes. I'm fully satisfied with what they came out with. The quality of course is great, that's never an issue, but the curations, spectacular. The versatility of these palettes are great for such a wide range of skin tones. Just all of these looking different from one another, really, really a great curation. So if you were interested in these, I hope that this video was helpful for you. Like I stated, I will have the links down below for you to shop these items. And um, yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to comment down below. We can answer each other. I will do my best to get back to you guys as well since these are one of my favorite launches. And huge thumbs up. I'm really, really happy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure you like this and subscribe to my channel. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.